What's going on guys, Samich here, and today we're going to be playing some Eco. Uh, Eco is a, a crafting game where your choices matter. You can affect your, your environment by chopping too many trees, picking too many berries, yada yada yada. Um, the overarching story is that there's a meteor that is going to crash into the planet and you need to develop the technology to stop it really um, so we're gonna finish making our character here and then we'll get right into it See, black shirt Brown belt, some blue jeans, uh, let's do some black boots, sure, sure that looks good. Alright, so here's our welcoming, uh, welcome to Ego Citizen, we can move around, do all that good stuff. W S A D press space to jump. Cool beans. So in my I've played a little bit of this game so far, just to kind of get get my bearings and understand what's going on. I don't know at all, so we're gonna learn together. Uh, we need to find the meteor in the sky. Where's it at? Well, while we're waiting for it to show up, we can place down our tent. And I kind of want to get a little bit of a high ground. I want to be able to have some, some dirt under me so I can dig down and make it make a mine shaft if I need to and all those sorts of things um, still no meteor the nice thing about this game is that it actually is in real time so it shows on the meteor 30 days tell the meteor impacts that is 30 real days or 30 days that your server is up. So if you're only signing on every couple days to your own personal server as opposed to a public server, then you will be... It obviously will take a lot longer than 30 straight days. Still not seeing this thing. So our next task is to claim your property. So that's a nice thing about this game is that you get to claim your own property. So when you are on a bigger server, people can't just come in and start placing dirt around your house or digging holes under you or whatever, whatever it may be, as long as you claim the property that you're building on. Um, you can also set authorizations right here big arrow authorization to allow people to come into your whatever so you can allow all citizens if long as they have citizenship on your server they're allowed to you know come in admins only uh, everyone whatever you want to do um, and if you press L right down here in your little tab, you can see the current laws that are in effect. Uh, you can propose new laws. Um, you can tax people. You can do whatever you want. So the first law that comes up right away is just citizenship. Um, you need to have at least two hours of playtime 
on the server in order for you to be a citizen. That's just by default. It's just how the servers come unless you change it by yourself. Um, and then you get to become a citizen. You can run for office for an election. You need to have at least like, I think it's like three or five votes, something like that in order to run for office. So you can't just run for office by yourself on your own server. I don't think anyways. <clears throat> but Still no meteor, so we'll just keep trucking along with the other things. So we want to open the authorization UI. And you can move everything in this game. You can, you know, I don't think you can move those, but you can move like your backpack, wherever you want it to open up at. I like to have it right over here. Um, open, navigate. To the authorization tab open the authorization ui by clicking on the property name so right here is our property name well bam right there so this shows your location of where your property is at at the moment we can change our color um i want it to be a purple because i like purple let's go a darker purple and then sandwich garden so I guess that's what we're called. I don't really want to be called Sandwich Garden, but I don't know how to change it. All right, here, Sandwich. What should we be? Sandwich Land. Sure. Enter. Sandwich Land. All right, so we got our authorizations. Um, press Tab to move your mouse freely uh, open your tent by looking at it navigate to the storage tab and drag your stone axe to the toolbar so inside our storage of our campsite we got our stone axe I'm just gonna grab everything we got our pickaxe we got our shovel this is your stone hammer for building I don't really need the torch got a little bit of food uh, then we got our land deeds in our claim stake for claiming more property so there we go we got my stone axe and this one is gonna say nutrition meter unlock you have to eat in this game or you can't do anything so when you're eating you are allowed to do stuff so you want a complete balanced diet, how this shows. 25% of each carbs, protein, fat, and vitamins is ideal. Obviously, it's a little harder if you're not able to hunt for your fats and your proteins. But you just got to make do with what you got. Um, so the better quality and more balanced your diet is, the faster you gain skill points. So right by default, you gain 40 skill points per day. Um, the more, the better quality of food you're eating, obviously this little bar right here is going to go up and you're going to gain more skill points per day or experience points. Um, so as your calories go down, obviously you're getting, that's you getting hungry. If you run out of calories, you can't work. So you can't chop down trees. You can't dig any dirt. You can't build any buildings. You can't do anything. You can't farm. So, also for food in your toolbar to examine its nutrients. So we got some, some tomatoes by default, and you can see on them that it gives you some four carbs, one protein, and three vitamins, plus 240 calories. Uh, then you right click by eating on it, and if you see, our bar changed by a lot. So we have no fats in our diet right now. We just have carbs, protein, and vitamins. So our diet's a little imbalanced, which is okay at the beginning because all you're given is five tomatoes. So we need to find food that contains fat, which we'll do later. Um, this one is to collect food. We'll go look for some food here in a moment. 
And then we well, let's do it. We can do this one. Chop a tree until it falls over. Do we see the meteor yet? That'd be nice to look at so you can see. I guess not. So something that I think matters that I haven't figured out completely yet is you don't want to really chop down a lot of trees in one area. You kind of want to, like, you don't want to clear cut an area. Like, I don't want to go down there and chop down every tree in that area. Like, you want to, like, spread it out, chop a couple trees down here, chop, chop a couple down here, you know, allow for the environment to recuperate and basically repopulate the trees. So when you chop down a tree, you got to chop it up in little pieces or you can't pick it up. So you'll see it's kind of outlined in green when you can pick it up. So you can pick that up. And when they're yellow like that, you can't pick it up. And you can carry up to 20 pieces of wood. So I got 20 on me right now. And if you walk up, anything that looks like this is a stockpile. You can throw that on there by right clicking and it'll stack them up. And there are stumps when trees go down and you can chop them down. You can chop the stumps up if you have a metal axe, otherwise they just sit there. Um, so what did it want us to do? Work orders will use nearby tables and storage to fill for, fulfill work orders. Storage link can be managed by interacting with the tables. You can order more products than you have ingredients. Work orders will be paused. So basically creating a queue, open the tent, walk up to it, press E, find the workbench, and we will order a workbench. So that is order. Going up. Where's this damn meteor at? I don't know. So, it's almost done. I'll wait for that real quick. So, there's our workbench. And you can see these are linked, so this is the campsite inventory and this is the stockpile right outside so when they're linked like this that means the campsite can access stockpile stockpile can access the campsite if you don't want that to happen then you just uncheck it so in more advanced things later on down the road you can have a certain stockpile for a certain bench so you could have like this stockpile is specifically for like this workbench right here if you wanted it to be that way so if you were to go in here you could link like I only want this to pull out of here which it could do and then depending on where you have them is where it would pull out first so it's gonna pull out of here and put into here first prioritizes what's on top so, I think it wants us to make some hewn logs. Find the hewn log recipe. Pick up the completed hewn logs from the stockpile. So, crafting hewn logs. Let's just make five of them. So, hewn logs are used to build. Use them to build your houses. And then you'll use them for other recipes. This is just the beginning of the crafting tree. As it gets more complicated later on, you'll be using boards and you'll learn how to uh, do mason, masonry, and many other things. Let's claim some land. That's the next order of business. 
So you automatically start with six land claim papers, which means you can claim six plots of land just to start. So you pull out your land claim stake, which is set to my number nine right here. And you can see that when you place your tent down, that's your initial that's your initial starting area that comes with the tent. So like anything in this blue is what I already own. So we'll go over here and I want to claim this. So right click, bam. And if you wanted to pull one out, you can walk up to it and you can left click on it. And I just, I got my land claim paper back. So you can move your, you can move your property wherever you want. So we're just going to kind of spread this out, make a big area that we want to claim. We got two more papers left. So I'll put this one here. And uh, we'll put this one right here. So that's all you get initially. And you have to unlock more land claim papers and craft them later on in the game. So it takes resources and researching and leveling up and stuff continuously collecting materials until you can make some more, get some more, uh, some deeds, some papers so you can make some more, get some more property. Meteor? Oh, there's the moon. There it is. So there's the meteor. And as you can see, it says impact in 29 days, 23 hours, and 42 minutes. As you can see, it's in a spiral orbit around the planet, set to impact within 30 real days. Together with your fellow citizens, you'll need to advance civilization to a level of technology capable of stopping the meteor. Since all your resources to do this come from the environment, you could very well destroy the planet before the meteor even impacts. To navigate these twin dangers, you'll need to collaborate with your fellow citizens to build a thriving economy tempered by a well-run government. You'll create cities, markets, and a thriving industry. You'll elect leaders and pass laws to grow your economy and protect the ecosystem. You'll advance technology and acquire massive power over the environment. Ultimately, your success will depend on your intelligent collaboration and govern governship among your fellow citizens. It's time to get started. So yeah, that's pretty neat. It uh gives the game a lot different feel than other survival crafting games. Um, just makes it a lot more interesting than the than the regular just build stuff and stay alive type thing. Um, there's nothing in this in the environment that is really out to kill you like you don't have to there's like wolves there's buffalo there's deer there's rabbits uh, there's fish in the water but nothing you really need to worry about other than that meteor that's gone already so our next order of business we should grab our completed hewn logs. So you can walk up to your stockpile, press E, drag those into your carrying area, bam. 
we finished that. So I'm sure it's going to have us try to build something. And any crafting station and eco require enclosed rooms to work. Building requires both a hammer and material to place blocks. The hammer can place different forms of the same material. Change the form type with shift plus scroll wheel. Uh, in order for something to be considered a room, must follow a few rules. Maximum of two blocks of empty space and walls. So if you just leave blocks empty, you can do two, but not four or three high. <coughs> Excuse me. And obviously you can't have hole. There are absolutely no holes in the roof at all, which makes sense. So... <coughs> next order of business is going to be for us to build a room because we're going to be getting a new crafting table which is a construction table that's going to be required to be in a room so as the game progresses you will get different crafting tables we can look in here and we can look at them so we got uh, we got repair stations we got carpentry tables we got masonry tables right here so like a carpentry table, if you look, which is going to be our first room, our first table, not room, that we get. Uh, you can see the requirements say, must be contained within, within a room of 25 meters cubed of free volume. And then like a masonry table is also 25 meters cubed. Repair station can be placed outside. Uh, research table must be contained in a room of 25 meter cube, free volume, and a 0.5 tier 1 average tier. So in order to get a room with a higher tier, you got to place furniture, which is pretty neat. So on here you can see... Maybe they're not... Oh no, they're made in the construction table. So inside the construction table you can make tables and chairs and... Uh, ice boxes, beds, and toilets, and all sorts of things to kind of label a room as certain as a certain thing, like a kitchen, a bathroom, bedroom, living room, whatever. Um, and then those items have to go in those rooms, so you can't put a toilet in a bedroom, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I guess build the house. This one is to open the map. We can look at the map, which is kind of neat because you can turn it. You can turn your world and you can look at it. Um, so, yeah. Where did we go? There we are. So you can even zoom in and you can see. So you can see, like, depth. So you can see, obviously you can't see that's my tent, but you can see there's a workbench here, there's a tent here, and that's just, that's the, my stockpile. But you can see the terrain, which is pretty neat. Um, and we'll move this over so we can read our, our task here. So we want to open the right panel and expand the environmental data, which I already have the right panel open which is right here. So environmental data, and then select an option. So let's look at pollution. Uh, trample spread. So you can see it's only just very slightly of where I've been walking around. And a little bit right there, because I think that's where I spawned, and then I jumped up here. Um, let's see what else we got. Trampled some, which is where I've walked the most. Uh, player activity, obviously right around my camp, and there's not going to be anywhere else in the world because I'm the only one in this server at the moment. Debris, a little bit of debris from chopping down the tree that I did. Air pollution, none, because I don't got any thing making air pollution. So on the right panel, it wants us to click on markers, which is right down here. 
and then click on drop marker. So we can drop a marker, bam, and drop the marker right where we're right next to us. Um, you can see the marker, click there to bring up the options. So we can bring it up, we can change its color. So I want to be like, if you wanted to mark something for being like, oh, here is where there's berries. Like there's a big plot of berries over here or something. You want to mark it to later go back. You could do that, but we don't need it. So we're just going to remove it for now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But you can do all sorts of different things. You can see where certain animals are, like um, there's foxes, otters, salmon, turtles, tunas, turkeys. So we can look where the turkey population is and look, there's a bunch of turkeys over there. Or capacity, we can look at wolf population. So there's a bunch of wolves over there. There's a ton of wolves there. Look at that, it's white hot. Uh, we can look at trout. So there's a bunch of trout in the water. Obviously, near the shore. Um, tortoise. So, we got any turtles on this planet? Just a couple there. Uh, that looks like it. Not many tortoise. tortoises. Um, some otters. Bunch of otters. Um, rabbits. Bunch there. A little bit here, a little bit there. Seems like there's a lot of animals over in that area. Uh, foxes. Elk. That island is just something else. And bison. Which bison are pretty much the most abundant. They're everywhere. So yeah, that's the map. It's kind of interesting. Uh, what else we got? So build a house. This one is... Where did that one lie? Is that one away? Um, so looking for berries and food. Eat something containing fat. So let's... I guess we can go for a little walk. Um, we'll, we'll go look. Which way am I going? I want to go over this way. So as you can see, if you look over by my calories, I'm holding shift, which it doesn't increase your speed by a whole lot. Um, you actually lose calories for sprinting. Um, so sprinting will make you hungry. And I'm actually starting, my calories are starting to go down from chopping that tree and stuff. Look, there's some turkeys, some rabbits. Here's some beets. So we can just walk up to them, press E to pick them up. And there's some more beets. So that's, we can eat some beets. Eat those beets. And we got some seeds that we'll be able to research later on since we haven't gotten any points yet so we can't even look at our skill tree. Um, we'll be able to research and get a till, a hoe, so we can uh, make a garden. Here's some corn. Obviously, it looks like corn. That one's not ripe enough. I think this is wheat, but I don't have a sickle, so I can't get it. I'll just pick some corns. And you don't want to... Um, you don't want to harvest everything, because harvesting a bunch of the resources in an area is going to make the animals leave. Um, they'll get a little angry face at you. I don't know why that seaweed is growing out of the water. But, yeah, it'll, it'll push wildlife away or make them die off or affect them. A lot of this isn't even ripe enough to pick. But we'll pick, we'll pick a bunch of it. Because there's a lot here that's not even able to be picked yet. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's some buffalo, there's a rabbit, and 
And I haven't even touched the surface of this game, so I haven't hunted or anything. Let's take some corn. We got 40 corns. I want to find some other types of food so we can need some huckleberries. Huckleberries are hard to find. I had a really tough time finding them in my last playthrough, which I didn't even play all the way through. I just kind of got the feel of the game. But they were very difficult to find. And you can jump up two blocks high, just like this. You mantle them. So I'll walk up here. We'll see if we can find some huckleberries. If not, we'll go back. There's an elk. Here's some huckleberries. I thought I just saw some. Oh, right here. That's a huckleberry bush, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just dumb. This game is very deep. Very simple on the surface, but very deep. Oh, here's some huckleberries. So I just picked up some huckleberries. I don't know what that was. Beans! That's how you get some protein. I never got beans in my last game. So I'll get a couple of those. Because I'm gonna we'll plant some. And then you get ferns. Um, you'll need plant fibers later on in the game. Yeah, so your stuff is always marked. So as you can see, it's always on the edge of the map. And what I like to do is go to my markers and hide my stockpile. Because I don't need to see my stockpile. I just want to see my campsite. Swim! There we go. So in order to hunt, you need a bow and arrow. In order to make a bow and arrow, we gotta get to the carpentry table. And then we'll need boards and fiber, plant fibers, and many other things in order to do hunting. You need a campfire to cook your food, um, and it'll show you recipes inside your campfire. And obviously this is ore, so I'm pretty sure this is copper. It's just regular stone, dirt, obviously. But we'll head back to camp. Might as well chop some trees down so we can get ready to start working on a house. Slap them in there, pick more up, slap them in there. Oh, so our stockpile is full. Oh, can we build another stockpile yet? We can. So we can build a larger stockpile, which is a five by five by five area, or just a small stockpile, which is a three by three by three. I just Last game, I did a big one right away because it just makes the most sense. So, we'll just stack these. We'll just stack those on the ground then for now. Um. So, while this is crafting, this should be a good stopping point. Um, I think 
we'll make a house in our next one. We will start building and start leveling up since we haven't even unlocked our skill tree yet. Uh, we'll talk about other important things like taxes and skill points and hunting and all that good stuff as we get to it. But that'll conclude part one, episode one, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm Samich, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, like this video, comment, whatever you want to see. If you got any questions, let me know, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.